in this thing. This one might be, but, but I okay. I, I have to mute, thing. don't I? Hmm? Do I mute on mine? On the Zoom? Yeah. I mute myself. You mute, yeah. Okay. Scott is running just a couple minutes late, but he said don't wait for him. But I don't see you. Let's see give Steve that. a second to roll around. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff hasn't been there quite some time in person. Which I don't blame him. Which well, you know, this is the beginning of this. Yeah, uh, we kind of uh, ordered all the attorneys. Yeah. So we have to work on something to go and we have to get somebody to go to the study chain. Why would you not wear pants? Six. All the March meeting of the Redevelopment Commission will come to order. Let's do a roll call to determine quorum. I'll start. Greg Campbell here. Dave Craven's here. Mike Hannon here. Lynn Mellinger. Lynn, are you able to hear us? No, that's good. Oh, we couldn't hear you. I had you unmuted on my end, so I don't know if it's sometime on your side. Oh, you're at the beach. Oh. <laughs> Rub it in. <laughs> oh, that sounds awful. <laughs> Let the record show. Then. Yeah, try logging in again. I'm going to see if I can. I'm going to have Jeff Graham talk to you and see if it's on our end or if it's your end. So I'll text you if it's on our end, okay? All right. Come back in. 
So who was that? That was Lynn. Oh, okay. At the beach. At the beach. Let me see if it's on our side. Hey, Jeff Graham, are you able to hear us? And can you uh, talk to me if you can hear me? It's Shanna, and yes, I can hear you. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, we're just having problems. I don't know if Lynn is having issues. Obviously, she's having issues on her end. OK. Could be sand in her computer. <laughs> Not being lazy, sore knee. Oh. <laughs> hey, Lynn, are you able to hear us now? Or can we hear you now? Lynn, if you are trying to talk, we cannot hear you. Yes. I'm trying. And you are totally fine. Do you want to go I ahead can, and... I can hear you fine. We just can't hear you. How about, can I leave you on the phone? Or are you yeah, in your phone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine with me. Because yeah. we just want to make sure if there's any voting that happens or, you know, just so yeah. we can... Yeah. Absolutely. So. Okay. All right. Okay. I think we... All right. Can we do a roll call again and I'll mm -hmm. just name everyone and then... Okay. Um, Adam Truman is not present. Craig Campbell? Present. Steve Denny? Is not present. Dave Cravens? Present. Lynn Mellinger? Present. Mike Hanna? Present. All right, you guys have a quorum. Cool. Lynn, can you hear us okay? I can. Very good, excellent. So we got call and order, we got the quorum, the approval of meeting minutes. Has everybody had a chance to read the minutes from the last meeting? And if so, yes. do we have any yes. questions? No. No questions here. Lynn, no questions on the minutes? No questions. Perfect. Do I have a uh, motion to approve the minutes as written from the last meeting? Motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of I'll, approving I'll do the minutes? I'll a roll call on it instead of doing a group. So Craig Campbell. Present. Or just say yes. Yes. You're voting yes to approve. Dave, oh, okay. Dave Cravens. Yes. Lynn Mellinger. Yes. And Mike Hanna, you are a non-voting. He's a non-voter. Okay, so minutes pass. Old business. Interstate quadrant master plan. Staff update. All right. Since our January RDC meeting, uh, we did, staff did present the market study and the conceptual plan to the Planning Commission. Uh, we know that they're an important piece of moving this project forward. Um, and so we presented to them, asked them to digest it for the month and if they had any feedback to give us feedback. So we did meet last night with Planning Commission and all of them seemed pleased with what was on paper um, and said what I took away from it was that they did feel comfortable with moving it forward and didn't want to have any comments. That's where we're at on that. Uh, I have talked to Julie more in the last couple weeks, and they are on. Oh, there's Steve Denny. Hey, Steve. Hello? Yeah, we hear you. Okay. Sorry for being late. Technical difficulties. No problem. Um, they, uh, Kimberly Horn is working to do final production on the plan, so they will be getting that to us uh, shortly. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, another thing to note, I think everybody is probably aware that I've accepted a new job and my last day with the town is gonna be on the 26th. Um, so I expect Kayla and Scott will kind of be taking over as the lead on the project uh, to keep moving it forward. Congratulations, but to our great loss. Thank you. We will miss you. Congratulations. Thanks, Lynn. Um, and I think that's all I got for the Interchange Master Plan update tonight. 
Okay. However, I do think that Lynn and Edward are here tonight, and if you guys have any comments or want to talk about anything. Yes, my name is Lynn Lawyer, Decker Lawyer in Maynard, and I um, represent um, some of the landowners on the north side of State Road 38. And, uh, you know, in your plan, the conception that, that, that I've seen it, I don't think there's been, as far as I know, any discussion with the landowners so that the road will go through uh, or any of the farmers. I mean, there was supposed to be another public meeting on that in October 2018, and to the best of my knowledge, there's never been another public meeting on that. Um, the owners that I represent, the Warren Hunsinger Trust and Anthony Hunsinger Trust, Foghorn Farms Inc. and Agriculture Enterprises Inc. have some concerns about the way that cuts through uh, several of their properties as well as some other properties, to farmers to the north due to drainage issues, due to where it cuts through, is probably you know going to make it more difficult to, for farming, but as long as it remains agriculture there, and for future development, as it is not going to leave sufficient space on either side, I don't think, for development. So I would hope that um, you all and the powers that be would want to talk to some of the landowners there. There's going to be several small pieces that are just going to be incompatible with farming um, with the current plan. And then wonder what, from what I see, from what you see north of State Road 38, what your plans are for putting development in there given the space where the road is going to go. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It, in my view, it's a very good question because you don't want to leave a strip that's not large enough for farming sure. and not sufficient for any type of, you know, real development other than something very small. Um, and, you know, I wondered if you, why the road was set there in the center rather than move to one side, leaving, you know, larger spaces for development, parking, et cetera. Um, Scott, do we know, do we have any, I mean, there's no, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's been no formal, formalization of the road going through at all yet, is there? Um, actually, Rachel. I'll speak to this one. So there is, so we're, we're almost talking about two separate projects here. So the one that, the road project, this is a 67th Street extension project, which is a city of Anderson driven project. They were the ones that were awarded um, an earmark, a federal, federal fund earmark for that project. And they are currently under design for the project. Now Town of Pendleton is participating on that project and we do have input on uh, some of the details on that corridor. So there is phase one design plans that have been completed and turned to, re uh, I guess, submitted to NDOT for review. Um, so we, we do have the stage one plans in our office that we are currently reviewing and we'll be giving feedback on those. Um, and that's kind of where we're at on our process for the town. but. I think, and I told Edward this last night, I think one of the people that you do really need to talk to is City of Anderson Engineering Department, since they are the project lead. And then they can give you a more detailed timeline moving forward on when those public, oppor public input opportunities will occur. Because with the federal aid process, and it being City of Anderson is what's called the LPA, they were awarded the funds, so they are the project lead on it. They're the ones that are responsible for doing the official public hearing notices for that project and scheduling the public hearing meeting dates and those types of things. We're kind of a, a sub on the project almost, but we have to follow their lead since they're the lead entity. Does that make sense? Well, I understand that they may be the lead, but this is coming to the town of Pendleton territory, so, and you all have input to this. Yes. That's why I'm asking your opinion on it. Um, Anderson was supposed to have a meeting October of 2018. There has been nothing since then. And we're already, apparently, phase one has been completed. Phase one design. Design. And the last meeting 
that I am aware of, and I would assume since you know I represent the majority of the property owners do part of that, is there were four possible plans and a fifth plan was submitted at that meeting and then we have heard nothing else. So I wondered what this board or commission I should say, you know, what their thoughts were on it when, you know, if you're going to cooperate and make commentary on it. Um, because there will be there will be pushback from my client if you leave them with a not very farmable property and a not very good setup for development in the future. Development in the future, what do you mean by that? Well, if it's my understanding from your plan, and correct, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is north of State Road 38 is some sort of industrial type or More commercial, commercial development. And, you know, I would like to know your thoughts on what you, uh, you know, what you envision for that, what you plan for that, because it looks like from where the road that is going, the east side of that is going to be too small for any real type of development, maybe other than a gas station or something of that nature. And I don't know whether you're, what kind are you looking at, you know, what kind of development is the town looking for in that area? To the best of my knowledge, we have, well, Kimley Horn has, has laid out several suggestions. We have not done any planning as to what will go on up there. It's a Keystone we, Development District, so it is something that's going to be special and unique to the town. Um, I think what's envisioned is likely like a Saxony type development where there's retail, commercial, possibly even some residential mixed into that. However, the timing would be key for the town of Hamilton. Um, but that's, I think, the, the mix of uses within that district um, is, I think, what we're looking at. What, in the past, we've discussed about the concerns of how, where the road would go and how it would be developed. We've, we've had some conversations, but nothing's been decided at all. Well, I guess what I'm telling you, has anybody looked into, done any studies of what kind of buildings you could put in there if you have that narrower, narrower pathway, particularly to the east? And Lynn, are you talking about where Corporation Drive would okay. connect to the 67th Street extension between yeah. Corporation cool. Drive and State Road 38? Yeah, absolutely. What narrow passage are you talking about? You see, there's the ground right along here actually has trees in it that's rather low. Mm -hmm. It's not really that developable. In the property lines, you're basically right about here making a triangle that can't be farmed, nor can it be developed. I don't expect a road project to be going in unless it's development driven. There are no funds right now for the state or the 67th Street extension to be constructed at this time. So I don't foresee a project like I don't I don't like we're not gonna go in and build a road in the middle of a cornfield. Yeah, where, this time. where are you talking about here? Exactly. And that was one of our concerns before was about the road so, in the middle and replacements and right around here there's a large uh, low spot and trees along the edge of the property line. I don't have a flat map where I can show you the actual property lines in here. But as this road comes right here, you basically made a small about acre to, to three acre triangle between the property line, the trees, and the road. There are many trees in that. Uh, there are trees in that field. Yeah, there's one large tree stump. No, no, I can see that from my hand. You're not farther, far north enough. Oh, sorry. Oop. Sorry. sorry, I hit something. <laughs> no, I apologize. There it is. Yeah, no. Um, there, there are, in fact, if we can get a Google Maps here, I can kind of show you. Uh, there, there's actually quite a large forest over there. Yeah. I don't think we have to. The only large forest would be just east of Fox, Fox Run. You know, there's trees over there. But there's all the Fox uh, Run. Can you just go to Google Maps? I'm actually going to find our zoning map because it has parcels on it. Oh, yeah, that works too. And it has 2020 or the photography, so it's the most recent. Oh, that's even better. Yep. See how much we're going to miss you. Right here, 
is this clump of trees that Shinji yeah. Agbon talked about. Now the road, as far as we can tell from the map, and the maps that we've seen both from your from the presentation here and at uh, other locations that have your conceptual map. Um, so there's the trees you're talking about. There's the trees I'm talking about. And here, I guess I was too far south on the yeah. point. Yeah. But yeah. as you come here, as you Oops, sorry, <laughs> I keep switching back. It's okay. Way. I keep hitting I'm just messing screen. with you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but as you come along here, this cut that you're making, and, and this map doesn't make the cut look as extreme as other maps I've seen, cuts much closer to this property line. The map I've seen takes it right from this property corner along the center, up and over. The triangle that's being made right there between those trees, the road cut, and the property line is, is really, you can get a gas station, you can get an old Blockbuster, if anybody remembers Blockbuster. But you know, if you want to go for a Saxony type development up there, you're going to need more conducive lots. Because in order to develop that space, you really got to get the property next to it. So if a developer's coming in, he's looking, he's like, okay, I got to deal with two property owners, not one property owner. One to get access is not a very good developable lot. And the other that might have the ground that I want to do. But, you know, whenever you've got a farm field with trees in it, that's low. You know, the trees are left there for a reason. So um, you're going to have to also have a lot of work developing that for uh, earthwork there. It's, is, is, it, not is this an issue between the property owners and the developers? It can be, given if the road were already there, it would be. But the road's not there yet. So we're talking about, well, why don't we avoid making this an issue that would hold up development by talking about the best place to put the road in advance? Okay. The road doesn't exist yet. So all right. That's so, all. so in my opinion, the best way to handle that, as Rachel pointed out, would be to go to the Next public hearing and say we don't want the road to go right there. So part of the that's, oh, I was gonna say that's part of our quandary is the next public hearing that we know of that has been announced to the public never took place. Well, and yet we are learning that there's a phase one development plan that is being created, understood. but there was no follow-up public hearing where we could express these these issues. Understood. So we're kind of caught with a who do we talk to, and where do we present this info to? I think Rachel just told you that. So, because yes. uh, we really don't, we aren't running this show here. We are. Anderson said this road's going through. Do you want to be a part of it? We said, well, yeah, I guess so. Well, I was going to say you have to be part of it because it runs through your town. But we aren't driving the bus, <laughs> so you should go talk to the bus driver. I agree. I mean, the We do at the local level have some say in how the road gets designed, but because it's a federal aid project and there are, we are not the local lead on it, there are some constraints that we have as a community. Um, I would say originally, however many years ago that this got brought to the table, I would say the attitude of Pendleton was more negative than it is today, that this wasn't something that, that the town wanted at the time. However, after discussions, the RDC and the town council agreed that this would be a good step for the town moving forward, so they did get on board with it. This particular corridor has been in the county's comprehensive plan since the early 2000s. So the court, the concept of it is not a new concept. Um, it's been there for almost 20 years now. Now the, the particular alignment, this is a, 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 an alignment that we pulled from other documentation um, because there were four corridors that were looked at. So for our project, for this um, quadrant, or our interchange master plan, we're showing this just for illustrative purposes. We are not determining the location of the road as part of this study that we're working on. We're pulling this information in because we know this is a project that's going to be, that is in the books and is happening and is moving forward, and we're trying to plan for that for our future. So. The discussion tonight is not necessarily the alignment of the road, and I think your concerns are very valid, but I do think you need to talk to City and Anderson about their timeline and their public input process because we are not the entity that is scheduling those. Well, we will, we will talk to them, but the, uh, the other thing is, is you're part of it, and this is part of your plan here. We want to know what, the, what positions that you all would have when we go talk to, let's say, City of Anderson Engineering. Yeah. I think also, you know, this is, I mean, the landowners involved are citizens of the town. 
I, you know, I think that the citizens of the, the, the government of the town might want to hear the input of their citizens and then maybe advocate for their citizens' position when dealing with other municipalities. That we don't disagree. Like I would say that overall we would not disagree with you at all. Mm -hmm. But the input on this, I believe, came two years ago. And so we're at a place now where some of these decisions have already been made. And I, I feel like, unfortunately, you guys are late to the table. And I don't know why that happened. And I, I don't have any reasons for it. We were not in charge of the advertising for it. Um, so I'm not sure where the lack of communication comes. Well, I was going to say, you know, where is the advertising if we didn't get notice? And that's where it's, it's, it's an issue that the property owners need to have with the city of Anderson then since they're the lead on the project and should have been doing those things according to law. Well, and we've been trying to contact some of the people from the city of Anderson between COVID and other things. You know, and then all of a sudden we get a road. But if, also at the end of the day, it will not be the city of Anderson that will be condemning our client's ground to take this road. They may be developing it and may be driving it, but the governing power that would condemn the land to take the ground would be the town of Pendleton in Pendleton's jurisdiction. So that's another point that why well, we'd like to have a discussion with whoever we can. Just, you know. I, I, I understand. And again, and Scott, Rachel, correct me if I'm wrong on this. While drawings have been done and plans have been made and areas have been covered up, we don't have any plans for this yet. Our focus is not out here right now. It's this is something for the future. We have not said, well, okay, we're going to do this here and this here. We haven't done that yet. We've not. This board has not decided or voted on anything in the road to go one way to the east or west or anyway. But you're working on a development plan all over for the town of Pendleton, we all know. Correct. So, you know, all this works together, and you know, my clients will want to be a part of this discussion since, you know, they're approximate 600 acres to there. Um, as they should be, as they absolutely should be. But we, they could come in and we can, they can attend me, but we're not talking about doing anything with that yet. I think the way that you can get the most, to get what you want, what I'm hearing that you want, it is a conversation with the city of Anderson that needs to be had. Before you, you know the appropriate people. person at the it's, city of Anderson. I, I did get a card last night. It's Chuck Lester. Oh, you did? Chuck Lester. Okay. Although he is retiring March 12th, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess better have gone. I'm not sure what their transition plan is, but it is the Anderson Engineering Department that yeah. you would need to work with. And I believe, uh, who's the consultant general who was here last night? the uh, right of way ordinance. Um, it was Ryan Phelps from the Madison County Council of Government. Yeah, spoke to Ryan, and I think okay. there's another contact that he gave that, that Chuck is referring to you all to. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, as soon as we are hearing things, we're trying to be proactive. The problem is, not hearing things. we're not hearing anything. It's not in the newspaper. It's not, we don't have. And this one has been quiet for a while, you know, and, and that's, how all this happened when it was so quiet is kind of a mystery. Let's put it that way at this point. Granted, but we 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 did not drive that bus. Drive. There was a there was a, a a CAC committee that had met um, on several. I mean, for a couple of years on the project. Um, but like I said, up until maybe a year ago, and it may have it. It, it was just in the papers. You know, this was not long ago, so we, I don't think, at least myself, the board, didn't know about it until it was in the papers. That was, what, six or seven, eight months ago when it was it was on the Harold Walton paper. And this RDC has known about it prior to that. I, you know, there was an agreement that the Redevelopment Commission did make with City of Anderson to contribute financially to the overall project. Um, so Town of Pendleton has been aware of that, has been at the table for those meetings and but I think, Lynn, for what you're looking for, I really think City of Anderson is the, the place you need to start looking at first. And I think you're right, you know, as a community, as the town of Pendleton, we should be an advocate for our residents and listen to what they have to say. So start with City of Anderson and then please continue coming to RDC meetings because this is the, the group that we'll be talking about first before something goes to the town council. You're welcome here anytime. And I, I wish we had more information for you, but we don't have any more information for you. 
Well, I would think you would want some of the same information I want. We do. Um, has Anderson hasn't talked about? I mean, there's no. There hasn't been any steps to start this project, even in Anderson. Where we're at right now with the communication we've gotten, we are reviewing the phase one plans and looking at any utility modifications that would have to be made, and we're sending our utility modifications back to the designer. Because that is one point of confusion to getting to phase one. I mean, there there have been surveyors out on this ground, and there was no contact with the surveyors or anybody with the actual landowners before they trespassed on the ground to do their survey. Now, We'd be happy to let them do the survey, but you know, our landowners want to know who's in their field. That, I, I, don't, we, I don't blame them. <laughs> when we've gotten calls in our office when the surveyors were out, mm -hmm. we did direct them to City of Anderson because that was a communication piece that City of Anderson should have provided to everybody in the world. Or the property owners out there. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you for bringing this to our attention, too, because. We're kind of in the dark on it as well. All right. We're going long, but Rachel, let me ask a real quick question. The survey you sent out, is that has that got to do with the quadrant or the visioning? The visioning. Okay. We'll say we'll have. Okay. So revolving if do we have anything else on the quadrant? Any other conversation questions? <laughs> things to talk about? Hearing none, we'll move to revolving loan fund program. Um, the last thing we did was Steve and Lynn were going to talk to the PBA about this, get some feedback. Uh, do we have anything to report on that? Steve, you're muted. Unmute. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, Okay, um, regarding that, um, we didn't go to the meeting because uh, I talked to Dave briefly and I talked to Scott and I talked to Rachel and I didn't feel it was the right time to go do that because there is no money for the re revolving loan fund. So I felt like we needed to have better discussion at the RDC before we go to other entities promoting it. All right. What discussion do we need to have? If it's even necessary to have that type of fund, and where is the money coming from? Good question. We talked about this briefly, yeah. uh, thinking that it was still a good idea, but. Right, so in the short term, originally it would probably be a loan from the electric department was the initial dollar. funds from the electric department are used in the intermediate between when the uh, stormwater fee revenue starts coming in mm -hmm. and the two projects that, uh, that are underway. One is we um, awarded the bid, came in a little bit lower than we thought, so we're pretty happy about that. And, um, and it also is a community crossing project, and that's Water Street. And then the second one is Franklin Street, uh, which is up to $1.2 million right now. Estimates, and we were applied to uh, community crossings for that. That project will be delayed if we don't get the grant. Uh, if we do get, we'll move forward and try and get uh, it constructed by the end of construction season this year. Um, so, having that available money right now, it's going to be. I don't think it would be financially unwise to even borrow more. But if community crossing comes in on uh, the second project, then um, that would be pretty positive for us as far as the cash flow. We'll be able to restart, start paying back the electric uh, bills. All right, so, well, Dave, what do you think of this? I, I think it might be a smarter idea to, to wait and see, and then we get a better ideal vision. Of our, our marketing plan analysis, what direction we're going, and might be able to tie that in with businesses to be able to make sure 
understand or remodel or expand their employee line so we can kind of connect the dots better. But I think we need to probably walk through a bit a little bit better. Agreed. Uh, uh, Steve, Lynn, Dave, does it make sense to present to the PBA what we have and see if it's even valuable? To see if they even find value. Because if no one finds value in this thing, then we don't, you're right, we don't need it. Uh, if they do find it valuable, but they have suggestions on how to make it more user friendly or how it could better suit the, the business owners in Thompson, then, then we have somewhere to go with this. Probably be wise to make that decision before we start working on the ordinance and resolution and getting them to match up better. You're going to spend a lot of time and stuff on that before we get to yep. you know, while, while we're waiting to see if we have funding, can we present to them and say, look, give this a look. Is it helpful? Is it not helpful? If it's not helpful, why not? Do you want it? Do you not want it? And uh, move from there. Does that does that work? Yeah. Obviously, they've had it and nobody's used it, so it didn't it didn't work. And, and for whatever reason, and maybe you know, getting some more feedback that we have a better vision of how we could use it to better the city. Yeah. So so maybe the the whittled down question is. If we were to have a revolving fund, um, how would it be structured to best suit you? And you know, I, the most likely way it will be um, the revolving fund will be financed is that we'll probably use uh, town money to be collateral, and then it'll be a bank loan, and then we'll be, if I use this phrase, the co signers. And let's say, and I'll just make so we make the math simple. We put up half a million, and local banks or banks, let's say two or three banks decide to participate. Uh, we put up half a million, and after negotiation with the banks, they'll reduce the rates because we've got that half a million as collateral. And if they do half a million dollar loans, just for math, I'm not saying this is the way it would be, for five million, so that'd be 10 loans. And um, you know, one could fail, and then the town would, with the, what we have in reserve, would pay it or make it some more. Let's say we put a 500,000, but the banks only say, uh, let's just say it's one bank. They say we'll do loans up to two, 2.5 million and at, at uh, total, and they're a quarter million each. So they could have lower rates because if two fail, they're still okay with the other three. But it doesn't matter. Right? Not like there is, but the other ten, seven. Uh, it's something to consider on this, folks, is that and we talked about this briefly, but um, we are receiving funds from the Madison County Food and Beverage Tax. But uh, two two hundred fifty thousand Rachel, is that right? With with the op with the chance of getting more, maybe. With it, but we got a three years two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar fund coming in from food and beverage tax for the historic preservation commission. And we are going to put that money out as grant money to the business owners or building owners of buildings to. Continue the upgrades of the buildings down through downtown. And so that can work hand in glove with the revolving loan uh, for those projects that are much bigger than what the rather small, granted 250000 but that's, a, that's not a lot of money for rehabbing a building. Uh, the revolving loan program can help with that. So um, I think it's a good thing to do, but again, if both the business owners in Pendleton don't think it's, a, it's worth doing, then we won't do it. But I do think we should go to them and ask them, ask their opinion. I just want to note that the food and beverage money that we got is only for property in the historic preservation district. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and Rachel, is, and we haven't been notified of when we would even receive that money, correct? No, I was told um, in March we may be receiving it. Um, I, and it was tentative, but we talked about it in March. Um, and then it was actually coming in for June of beverage. Um, you know, I was, I was told it may not be the full 250 right away, but as it's funded, as money's coming in, that it would get dispersed to us. So I think we'll get some chunk in March. Okay. Okay. So, what are the thoughts on taking this to the PBA? Just for feedback. And I'll be happy to do that. I'll I'll be happy to meet with them. I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be David, I'll go. Yeah, is everybody okay with that? I'm sure. Gonna... Steve, I don't want to step on your toes. If you want to do it, do it. Uh, no, I'd be happy for you guys to do it. Okay. So then you all right with that? These ones, if you can. Hey, Glenn, can you hear us? All right. David and I will set up the time to. I'll talk to the chair and we'll set up a time to go talk to him. Cool, thank you. Onward, new business. RDC visiting, visioning discussion. Yes. Uh, so I sent you guys some emails over the last month. Um, one of them is the RDC handbook. So let me bring it back up a little bit. So it is great that we are putting together this interchange master plan. I think that this is really going to help be a blueprint on how the RDC moves forward with those quadrants and we'll be very mindful of what type of the development is happening out there and it will reflect what Pendleton will to see in the future. Um, but, you know, we are kind of at this place where what else can we do? Uh, we haven't had a ton of very active economic development projects lately and it could be because we've had a lot of transitions in town, we've had Pandemic, we had a tornado. Um, you know, we did have a lot of time invested in the wellness center, and that's opened up. So that's been, you know, good to kind of wrap that up. But you know, what other things can we be doing as an RDC? Um, you know, we have some seasoned members on the RDC and some very new members on the RDC. And you know, even from my perspective, I'm not fully aware of what an, an RDC can do and what are other communities doing. How are they using their RDCs to do great things in their community? So. Um, I did pull that RDC handbook that I emailed out to you guys, which I think is a really great resource where you can look through and see, you know, what types of things that you are able to do as a redevelopment commission. Um, the other thing that Steve and Lynn both participated in over the last couple of weeks, um, there was some webinars about redevelopment commissions, which I thought they were excellent. And yes. Yeah, I mean they were like a good baseline information of a, like a basic. 101 on redevelopment commissions. So they, I thought they were very, very helpful. They talked about TIF districts and how to use TIF districts and what a TIF district even is. Um, so there's going to be more of those webinars coming up, and I'm sure we'll be forwarding those invites to you guys. And if you want to sign up for them, I would highly encourage them because they've been, the first two were really, really good. Um, and I think hey, Rachel. I'm sorry to interrupt. Can is there a way? I, I I might have missed this with the connection, but can you email the board members, the commission members, the two PowerPoints from the first two sessions? Yeah, definitely. Good idea. Thanks. I was super impressed with it. Um, another thing that I did put together um, was that survey that I sent out to you guys. And this was really just to kind of get you thinking because Scott had given me this list. And I can't remember who you got it from. Someone from Ball State? Yeah, it's a former professor at Ball State who he may still be teaching, but he's got a consulting group. And those are um, key questions to see where you're at, or where you want to go. 
What was what what was the point of that? I think the point is to help expand our ideas on what the RDP is. There were some things that were on that questionnaire that I thought were great ideas, like do we have a housing study? I don't think we have a housing study. You know, we did do this market study for the quadrant plan, but you know, do we need to take a look at what type of housing we're looking in Pendleton that would help us so that we can have I don't know, you know, what would that housing study tell us? And I do think that's something that was outlined in our comprehensive plan from 2018 that we did talk about doing some type of a housing study. So, you know, maybe the timing is right right now to look at a housing study, but that's something I think we need to talk about and decide at some point. Um, another thing, one of the questions on there, it was, you know, how are you factoring in redevelop tools um, in your economic development plan? the lead economic development person in Pendleton? Is it Fred Campbell? Is it Scott? Is it Chet? You know, I think those are types of things that maybe we need to think about. Who are these leaders in our community? You know, who are the partners in our community? You know, PBA, I'm sure. They are a natural partner. The Madison County Chamber of Commerce, I think, is a natural partner. But are we engaging with them as an RDP like we could be? I, I would like to suggest that On some regular basis, we do this very thing. Because I'm ashamed to say, I, I went through that survey, I couldn't answer most of the questions. Right, and I, I didn't had, mean to I send no, it to no, no, this is, you, but... No, this is good, because I had no clue <clears throat> about most of the stuff in there, and I thought, Jesus, man, I got, I got to get my act together here. <laughs> uh, I felt the same way, Craig, so don't feel bad. I don't know any of this stuff. Um, and I think it would be very helpful for us to figure out what we want to do if we did. You know, I, the three things you just mentioned, like, well, yes, of course, why wouldn't we do that? Well, Craig, I couldn't answer it either, so that's why I sent it to you. <laughs> well, <laughs> you sent it to the wrong person. <laughs> so, um, I think we should incorporate these very things within the every RDC meeting to at least discuss them, at least a brainstorming thing, and hey, think about this thing, because I didn't even know that stuff was out there until you sent the survey. Agreed. You know, I, I have two responses on the survey um, right now, and I can, I'll let you maybe take some time. If you don't know the answer to all the questions, that's okay. Just maybe write down some thoughts that you may have, and then as the RDC moves forward, you know, maybe we take a deeper dive into some of these things that you feel most passionate about that you think we can make a difference on. And I guess it was really just to get us thinking like, hey, there's a lot of opportunity out there and there's a lot of stuff we could be doing. Um, especially right now with everything being kind of this weird transition mm -hmm. of you know, are people going to be working in offices? Are, how relevant are business parks right now? You know, things like that. So, and I, I'm going to be curious. One of the things I want to look at too, you know, the, five, the top five economic development successes in Pendleton over the past five years. Everyone's got their own perspective on this, and I'm I'm curious to see what you guys all have to say about it. Um, one of the other section of questions that I thought was really interesting: what specific efforts exist? Um, you know, kind of tourism. I think that's something we don't necessarily think of for town of Pendleton, but we are a, a tourist destination. You know, we have Falls Park, we have a, a historic downtown. So how are we capitalizing on that? And I think now with the wellness center opening, how do we work to help make that wellness center more of a success? Because our community, whether you like it or not, is invested in that community center. So how do we make that success? How do we, are there efforts to enhance new business attraction? And then what are we doing with our local businesses on helping them grow and expand here? Another big one that I think we probably need to talk about at some point is you know, fiber and Wi-Fi and Which we don't have a name plan right now. And, you know, we're a community that is trying to attract businesses that 
meet those types of things, what everyone does nowadays, what would be our response as staff um, for anyone coming to us? So there's there's some things that we need, school staff needs to help sell Pendleton um, as part of our work. So, so we have some homework. Yes. If you would like for us to complete the survey as best we can. Yes. Uh, if you don't know the answers, it's fine to skip over it, but answer the ones that you have thoughts on. Or are passionate about or, or whatever. Show your passion. Well, thank you for doing that, both of you. And, and the, the, the booklet and everything, that, that will be very helpful. And I, I, was, I wasn't asking in anger, you know, why was it sent? I, but because I felt so that bad, I, God, I should know that. <laughs> I don't know any of this stuff. No, I, I mean, I read through that list and I was like, oh, I just had ideas going off everywhere that, hey, we could be doing all these things, <laughs> you know, and we plan to move forward on how to get it done in smaller chunks and prioritize. So the first step is get it on paper. Just the, just the general ideas, even. Like you said, just complete the survey as best we can, pop all the ideas we can in there so we can at least have them down on paper and then start quantifying them and categorizing them as to where we might go. You can do that. Uh, well, I was going to go ahead and finish up, and I was just going to okay. supplement when, when you're done. Uh, I don't know if you have anything else to say about this. Anybody else got anything on this? Dave, Steve, Lynn? No. I do really appreciate uh, the They were very helpful for me. And I know I was super impressed with them. I would like to do yeah. those. Yeah. So, to finish up the visioning subject, um, one of the things that's We'll probably do this next month, although it may be pushed back to the month after that. So um, now that we've got a new chief deputy clerk on board. She's going through and looking through the finances. She has a report due in April. I believe it's April first. The first. It's required every year to the state if you have a TIF. So she's, as you can imagine. Um, this is her first time through it, so it's going to take her a while to do it. Uh, of course, the next year after that, she'll probably be able to do it pretty quickly. But uh, I'm waiting for her to get settled with that, and then um, we'll invite myself, Willie Bowles, the clerk treasurer, Karen, and Chet Babb, and RDC members at a minimum. At least one or two would be enough of them to have a forum, but that's not really it, so it wouldn't be a meeting. But um, just to get a snapshot where the uh, RDC is financially. Because uh, I think that's that's important to really go forward. Absolutely. Um, so, everything. But anyway, that's in the works, just so you know. So that will probably be the next major subject, if not other major subjects that will come before you pretty quickly. That would be helpful. That's a good point. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. I wanted it at the beginning of the year, but Karen was like, well, look, I don't, <laughs> I don't have to do this till March 1st, or be April 1st. So. She's had a lot that she's had. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I thought I had it bad. <laughs> <laughs> I feel her pain. I'm not been here a year yet. <laughs> All right, that's everything on the agenda. Do we have anything else to discuss from any of the members? Did I hear someone say they would not next month, but the following month? What's our next meeting? April 1st. April Fool's Day, Lynn. Yeah, April Fool's Day. Okay, I just want to make sure. I think Scott said that the report might come the next meeting or the meeting after that. So. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Um, do we have anything else from staff to discuss? Anything else? 
Anything else from the public to discuss? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. I'll second it. Second. We got by the second. I call this meeting adjourned. Thank you all so Thank much. You. For See you. Bye. Well, we'll equal the elected clerk charter.